Hello and welcome back to another vlog. Here we are, the two of us, myself, and this handsome guy they call Neuropuppy, alone, at home. No one else is here. Helene actually left us. She's not going to be back for at least another month. It's sad, isn't it, my boy? It's very sad. Yes. You want to give mommy a kissy? A little kissy there in the camera? <laughs> oh, there you go. Good man. Good man. He just gave the camera a kissy. That's what you get. He knows I'm talking about his mommy. And he's like, yes. I wish this was mommy's face and not some cold, hard iPhone. Ah, oh, boy. I'm with you there. I'm with you there. Not on the couch. I'm with you there in thought. <laughs> Although I wouldn't mind being on the couch with you, because that looks mighty comfortable. Look at these nice covers that we got. There's a blue one, and there's a red one. Nero likes the red one the most. That's his relaxing and sleeping couch, and this is his I'll watch the gate for you daddy couch. And I think when I actually go out, then he spends most of his time here just staring out towards the gate, waiting to see when that garage door will open or when the gate will swing open, and I'll come walking through. Right now he's probably thinking to himself, well, maybe mommy will come through there any second now. My boy, she's not going to be back for a while. Okay? We're both happy that she's on holiday and all that, but we miss her. Mm. Mm. We miss her a lot. Mm. We're so sad saying goodbye to her at the airport. I was hanging around with her at the airport for like two hours because we arrived way, way, way too early. On the way there, we got ourselves some cappuccinos at the Wild Bean Cafe. We got ourselves an oversized bar one chocolate. I bought two of them and I told her, well, I don't really want this because I'm not really a big fan of chocolate, but it was just the cheapest thing there. You got two of these for 20 rand, so it was 10 rand each, and these are called man-sized giant bar ones. They're 100 grams. They're huge. Okay, you can't really see it, but that's a shoe right there, and that's the bar one next to it. Okay, it may not be so big. Maybe we just nix gewohnt here, but still. It's rather large, and then I had a quarter of it, and I was already feeling totally sick, because I never eat chocolate. I'm not a chocolate fan. And I go and devour that huge thing. Man, big mistake. But we had the coffee. It was very nice. We sat around at the Wild Bean Cafe for a second. Then we drove on to the airport, which was another 30 or 40 minutes away. And we looked around the shops there after checking in. Helene's check-in was already drama-filled because she went and left her little pouch with her passport and her tickets and all her information. She left on the counter there where she was busy checking in. And she came to me and she was like, okay, where's the pouch? Where's the pouch? And I was like, well, I don't have it. You took it with you. And then she panicked and then she ran back there and was luckily still there. It would have been a terrible start to the trip if she had lost everything right then and there. She probably wouldn't have even made it out of the country. But she did, and she sent me a message that she landed safely in Paris, and that the French didn't give her very nice food on the plane. This was the one thing that they had to get right. The one thing. It's the one thing she was most excited about when it comes to flying. The food on the plane. She's a huge fan of airplane food. And then they go and mess it up by giving her bread rolls. Bread rolls, bread rolls, bread rolls, and more bread rolls. Probably knowing the French some wine with that. Bread rolls, wine and lots of garlic. There you go. Fine. Okay, but that's not the kind of meal she was expecting, is it, my boy? No. She picked an amazingly good seat. She picked one in the little baby aisle at the front, and luckily there were no babies in it. So she had a lot of leg room. She was in the aisle. Perfect. The perfect seat. I helped her with that, and I'm very proud of the fact that it was good for her. Then she arrived in Paris. She had to take a connecting flight to Dublin, and that was apparently also quite exciting because the French didn't want to speak English with her. I don't know if they were arrogant or something like that, or perhaps she didn't speak loud enough so they didn't understand what she was saying, but who knows, okay? But she had a tough time finding her way around there. When she finally made it, then apparently there was a little bus driver that was supposed to take them to the plane, but he couldn't find the plane. This is what she told me now via text messages after she arrived. She said that they drove around the Paris airport, I don't actually know what it's called, for a good 20 to 30 minutes, and they missed the flight. 
So her flight, she was delayed. She stayed there for four hours where she should have only stayed for one hour. You're crazy, boy. You are absolutely crazy. And that's not a good start to your trip. But luckily after that, she got on the plane. She arrived. Her mother picked her up. And they were all happy. Really happy, actually. Because when she arrived there, she was told, Well, Helene, welcome and everything. But right now, we've got to go pick a puppy up. A little puppy. Oh, it's a little puppy. I'm sorry, I'm moving the couch. I'm bumping the couch. He didn't like it when things move that he was actually on. But they went to pick a puppy up because her mother works with dogs. I think she's a dog breeder of some sort. And that's exciting. If anything, that's the perfect welcoming gift for Helene because she loves little puppies. She loves Nero and he's a little puppy. Look at him. He's a handsome little guy. <laughs> Uh, I'm actually really cruel telling stories about mommy around Nero here because I don't know if it's fully set in yet with him. He's been out of sorts. He really has. And the fact that he got to sleep on his mommy's bed for the entire night last night, that must seem kind of weird to him because usually he doesn't get the whole bed to himself. He maybe gets like half of it. Maybe half, but not the whole thing. He's had enough of this now. But still, I'm kind of sad that I'm not going to get to see Helene for another month. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be a month full of work. I'm going to be working the entire month as hard as I possibly can so that I can welcome Helene back to a more successful house. There you go. Straight up. That's going to be my gift to her. One of the many gifts because I'm no doubt going to get her all sorts of others. You can already see that the house is such a mess. That's washing that needs to be put away that I haven't done. This is some of my clothes. That's my pajamas over there. There's my jacket. The kitchen. Ah, the kitchen's not so bad. There are some dishes there. <laughs> no, don't look at the dishes. Don't look at the dishes. I've not been doing much around the house. I've been trying to get a Guild Wars Lost Chores adventure guide done. I recorded some Skyrim. I had to do a news episode this morning. It's been intense. I've done a lot today already, but I want to do more. I need to do more. I need to get another adventure worthy episode started up. But all I can think about is when I'm going to be able to see Helene's beautiful eyes again. Those almond shaped pits of passion and happiness. You know, that's what I end up thinking about when I can see her beautiful forehead again. It walks the line between Reese Witherspoon and Summer Glau. It's absolutely amazing. She's the most beautiful creature on this planet. Shh. I think it's okay to call girls creatures when you call them beautiful. It's actually okay. I've heard people saying it in movies and stuff. I'm almost sure it's okay. I don't think she'll mind that I called her a creature. <laughs> Look at him. Can you even see him? My Snappy. Hello. Oh, oh. We here. We here. Hello. There you go. You've seen us. It's okay. Carry on. You protect us. You watch the house. You keep the baddies away. Okay? And then when you're done, you can have a nap. Because later we're going to go for a walk. And... Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I should not have said that. And I'll feed you. And then maybe you'll go to the shop with me or something. That sounds good. There you go. I just planned our evening out. Perfect. It's going to be nice. It's going to be very nice. I'm actually going to find myself a movie to watch. I'll put it on my phone and then I'll watch it tonight in bed with Nero. I need to spend a lot of time with Nero because I think for the first couple of days at least that Helene's going to be gone, he's just not going to know what's happening. I told you before, he's out of sorts and it would be nice if I can just comfort him a little bit, keep him a little bit busy at least. So... That's going to be it for this video. I want to keep it short because I need to get back to work. And it's nearly dinner time, so I need to go and find myself some food. Maybe in the freezer. Maybe I'll go to the shop. I don't know. I have to decide about that still. We'll see. We will see. He's just sitting out there doing his thing. Wow. But you guys can feel free to leave comments about Helene's trip. Tell her what sight she needs to see in Ireland. Not sure she's going to go and see them because... She has most probably got the most rigorous set of events planned out for her already by her mother, her sister, her brother, her whole family is over there, everyone except her father, and it's going to be intense for her. It's going to be intense and it's going to be very cold because she went to Ireland in the winter while it's summer here. Just think about that for a second. I am busy sweating so much today 
and she's over there in like minus five degrees Celsius. She was just here yesterday. That's bad. That's bad. So, again, check back with more. Most important detail. Where is he? Where is he? Is he still out there? Oh. Oh. Happy comfort in Nero, puppy. Yes. Happy that.